Welcome to the third episode of Boxed Wine and Dine. And tonight, as you can see from the ladies on the screen, looking lovely, um, not so much myself, but we're going fancy and, you know, food you'd have to treat yourself, maybe on a date night, um, maybe just to feel that like a little bit extra special, which we need to feel during lockdown. Um, so we've all got our wines from last week, for the last two weeks. So we're in week three of our wines. Um, Anishka, how are you finding the freshness this week? Really good, really amazing. Um, I don't think I've noticed any difference still. Um, if anything, maybe it's, it's a little bit kind of opened up a tiniest bit if I'm, if I'm really looking for something, but I think it's just as fresh um, and I haven't really noticed much difference yet, which has been amazing. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Vijay, what, are you, what about you? What you um, I totally, I, I'm with you both because I find absolutely no difference from the day I opened it to now. This is three weeks in. And it's absolutely fantastic. Um, and it, particularly because it's a rosé, we like to drink it fresh. And it's uh, really very nice. I love it. Yeah. No, I'm finding the same. And I was quite worried because I was worried my kitchen might be too warm for it. Um, but it's not. It's fine. It tastes just as good So as week one. And I think even week two, it tastes even better. So, yeah. So, um, Anishka, we'll start with you because I think we've been starting with video for the last two ones. What have you got for your fancy food? So my fancy food is a bit of a decadent, again, I seem to go for very like big kind of comfort foods, but it's quite decadent fish pie with a smoked haddock um, and big king prawns inside it. I'll see if I can show you it. I have to just do a little dip of the screen. Oh, wow. That looks delicious. That looks incredible. Um, so yeah, I just, I got that idea. I think again, just from the wine, just the fact that I thought it would work really, really well with seafood, um, fish, and because it's got that extra kind of weight to it, a little bit of richness to it, um, and the aromatics I thought would work really well with the kind of richness of the, of the white sauce in the, in the fish pie. Um, so it's quite a decadent one. Um, and yeah, I think it's gonna work really well. Nice, that sounds, it sounds like a great, delicious pairing. Um, so we're on week three, um, and you've paired it with three really different meals. Um, and actually, I'm quite endeared to be to purchase that bo um, box of white now because I think it's show you've shown really good vers versatility with it. Definitely, I'm really impressed with it to be honest. Um, and it's been really great. We've been trying to like hold on to it because obviously we knew we had the three weeks. But every now and again, we keep like, oh, this would work really well with this dinner. This would work, work really well with this dinner. And like you were saying, only having one glass of it with each meal has been really great. So yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, video. What are you having for your fancy food? So fancy food for me. For me. Sushi is really fancy because I don't typically go for um, everyday um, sushi, meaning from, you know, how when I used to work in the city and, you know, people step out, get a sushi, you know, a box already and so on. There is a really nice sushi place near where I live and I chose to go with the omakase there. And it's really very special for me because, you know, they really source the fish oh, really wow. well. Um, and it's the omakase. I haven't put all pieces in because um, you know, I couldn't fit them all into the plate and I wanted the plate to look pretty as well. But anyway, um, I've always heard that sushi and rosé go really well. So I wanted to give that a shot for myself because I might have had it, but usually when I eat sushi, I drink some other wine, some other white wine or sake. And I really wanted to pair this and see how this works. So I'm looking forward to trying it. Nice, that sounds amazing. Um, so I've gone similar theme with fish, because I think we've all gone fish. And I've gone for dim sum, um, that you can't see very well because of the lighting, so apologies. Um, but I've got prawn dim sum and uh, vegetable as well. And I've got a, ch a bowl of chili sauce um, to dip it in. For me, it's, it's just, it's something a bit different. It's a bit, you know, I really miss as well going into the city and going into London and having like a dim sum Saturday morning brunch and things. So I thought, why not treat myself with this? Um, I wouldn't typically pair red wine with dim sum, but I think it goes quite well because one, it cuts through the like flavours in the chilli, um, in the chilli sauce and things, and it just adds a bit more texture to the whole meal. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that, which is really great. Um, one thing I wanted to discuss, which the more research I do on box wine, is its sustainability. And it's something that is really important to me. And I think we, we've talked about how great and versatile the wine is how fresh it's staying, but also our environmental impact on using the box wine is just incredible mm -hmm. at the moment. Um, Anishka, what are your thoughts? 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's something I actually meant to mention before, um, and it's something I've thought about before with some of the box wine that I've worked with before, um, has been about how much l less waste that you have, you know, with bottles and having to recycle, um, and also from a travels perspective as well. So, you know, shipping wine in bottles is much heavier. Um, so the fact that you can ship these kind of really, show you mine again, really compact um, boxes that are made of cardboard um, and recyclable materials is, 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 is much better, definitely. Um, and they still look really good as well. I mean, this one I think still looks really good. I think you have the best looking one, to be fair, great, out of all of us. <laughs> yeah. Um, Billy, yeah. what are your thoughts on uh, I totally agree. You know, this wine, a rosé, is meant to be drunk fresh. And, um, you know, and this tastes fresh in the box, but that's not the point. In the sense for wines that are meant to be drunk young, I think particularly there's a high value in packaging in this bag in a box because, um, you know, 70%, 70, over 70% of the overall packaging is actually recycled cardboard, as Anishka said. It's the pack that's plastic. Yes, there is some environmental impact, but I think if you, it, at least in, from what I've read, the impact of not transporting glass, which means there's lower CO2 emission and we're using the plastic, but we're recycling the, it's made from recycled paper, the cardboard, and the cardboard can be further recycled as well. So the environment impact is actually pretty huge, as you said, and uh, meaning it's actually minimal, but yeah. the positive impact on the environment is huge. So I'm actually, for anyone that's young, I would recommend that they actually consider packaging this in bag in a box. I'm saying this globally, not just for these three wines we're talking about, because if you, even if you think about it kind of globally, volume-wise, I would say about 65 to 70% of the wine produced is actually meant for reasonably immediate consumption. And if you then further split it out as within one year or within one and a half, two years, then actually there'll be more. Yeah. I mean, obviously within the 60% or two thirds of the overall production, I mean, these are not, I'm not quoting specific facts, but I'm just saying general idea or trends on what is being produced. So I think, uh, it's going to be really helpful for a lot of folks, uh, not just millennials, but people who want to lower their own carbon footprint, who want to contribute to the to lower the environmental impact of all consumption. I think it's a phenomenal idea. Yeah, I think for me, like it's a really easy swap to make in the supermarket because the quality of bag and box wine is improving as well in the UK. Um, and instead of buying three bottles of white or red or uh, rosé, you can just buy a box and actually generally it's a bit cheaper as well for the quality of wine you get um so i think i'll definitely make the switch going forward just for, you know for one everyday drinking house wine as initially yeah. said like it's just easy to pour a glass every now and then but also it lowers my environmental impact it's less heavy for me to walk out of my car with as well than carrying you know liters of wine in bottles worth um and yeah it's it's, it's all around it's an all round win for me really and i, I hope we just get better quality wines and a more wider array of wines in the supermarkets in boxes going forward. Yeah, I think like you say, for the more easy, easier drinking styles, obviously we see the merit for things that are richer styles and things like that to need that kind of the bottle aging or, yeah. or being able to have that kind of um, that development in bottle. But something, yeah, like you say, it's the easy drinking wines that you buy, you buy three bottles at the supermarket and instead of doing that, just having it in the box is just so much better. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Cool. Well, girls, I'm going to miss these Wednesday I nights. Know eating and drinking with you guys it's been an absolute pleasure um and thanks everyone for tuning in and watching cheers cheers, cheers. enjoy your dinner cheers. Bye.